at the Ashland Plaza, where usually when the sun goes down, the number of transients and homeless tend to increase. Fire investigators also on the scene. They say they don't know the cause of this fire yet, and that fire is still too hot to go inside. Fire crews are not only having to battle the Bryant wildfire, but they're also having to deal with lots of other issues, including thick vegetation, dry conditions, and treacherous terrain. The school, what was it that you looked mostly forward to when you went to shop? I really liked the bib overalls were a big thing, Ron. We had the bib overalls. I had really long hair, so I had a side pony with a scrunchie. And Dave, we're taking a look at a catalytic converter right now, and that's right up here, just right underneath your car. Medford breweries in the area are drumming up business with local beer week underway. Find out what some of those breweries are doing today. We'll give you a hint. One of them is playing Jenga. And one of the keys here is having an emergency preparedness kit on hand and in place, and that's what we have here this morning. We have water, we have food, we have a blanket. Oh, he says he chose to testify because he wanted the public to know his story. Polish dogs and all of it. I wonder what's the most popular. I don't know that, Ron. Which one do you like? I like Polish dogs. <laughs> I'm a regular hot dog fan. We're here at Stewart and Columbus where all of this happened just about a quarter of a mile down the road right now. The westbound traffic on Stewart being blocked and this all took place on the corner of Stewart and Cherry Street. Now Medford police tweeted out that around 445 they arrived on the scene. They were involved in an officer involved shooting. However, no officers were injured in this case, but one person was. We spoke to several eyewitnesses on the scene who say they saw a man carrying a gun walking down Cherry Street and so many of them concerned they phoned police Now, when police arrived on the scene. They asked this man to put his gun down multiple times, according to witnesses, but this man did not. So police did open fire. Many witnesses say they shot a couple of times. Many of them saying three times they heard three pops and this man did fall down on the church parking lot at the corner of Stewart and Cherry. And right now, Medford police, along with sheriff's deputies out there on the scene assessing the situation. We don't know much about what's going on right now. We have made calls to both Medford police and the sheriff's department. We have not heard anything back from them, but they did tweet out that they are not making any further comments besides this officer involved shooting happening 425 today and that no officers were injured. We'll be bringing you live updates throughout the rest of the night on this officer involved shooting here in Medford. Live in Medford, Randa Gore, News Watch 12. At 9 a.m. this morning, a loud and energetic picket line was back at work this time welcoming substitute teachers as they arrived for orientation. Honor our line, honor our line. As five buses full of substitute teachers drove onto school grounds, picketers blocked their path, some even taking out their cell phones and holding them up to bus windows. Teachers say they're frustrated and they're ready to go back to the bargaining table today. Get back to the board, get back to the table, and let's work. You know, we're here working. <laughs> They're there working, so why aren't we meeting and working? I want to go back to work tomorrow. What we need is movement by the district and collaboration to get a fair contract and get back in the classroom with our kids. The district said since contract negotiations didn't pan out as planned last night, they need to take these next couple of days to prepare the guest teachers coming in from all over the state. We are very focused on having um, academic learning occur this next week. That's our goal every week. Today at orientation, the guest teachers went over the Medford School District curriculum and emergency procedures. The district would not reveal how many substitutes there were, but did have this to say. We have, we have more than we need to run all of our classes. The district says those teachers are prepared to stay for the duration of the strike. These are all non-GMO crops. Sitting on 22 acres, Whistling Duck Farm is just one GMO-free farm in Josephine County. But ballot measure 1758 is trying to make it where all farms in the county will be GMO-free. This is our chance to make our local voice be heard. Um, <clears throat> this measure will protect our food, our farms, and our families. Look at that baby. The problem is, it's illegal for the county to go GMO-free. Senate Bill 863 was recently signed into law, restricting any county from banning genetically modified crops, with the exception of Jackson County because their measure was on the ballot before January 31st. It's not illegal for Josephine County to put the GMO-free measure on the ballot, but nothing will change if it gets passed. Well, it would be nothing more than an advisory vote, but wouldn't have the force of law. It will be handed over to the court and they'll decide where it goes from there. I do anticipate a lawsuit and I do anticipate that um, 
you know, the, the petitioners would bring an action and, frankly, probably name Josephine County as well as the state uh, as defendants. It's really imperative to maintain local sovereignty. You know, many constitutions guarantee local sovereignty and local control. And we believe firmly that it is our right to um, maintain local control of agricultural decisions. GMO-free activists plan to enact the Home Rule Charter, giving voters the power to adopt and amend their own county government. But the county legal counsel says this will only work if it's a matter of county concern. And this is a matter of both county and state concern. We're out here at the Medford Railroad Park where I'm riding on a train right now. But to keep these trains chugging along for years to come, railroad officials say they need more volunteers. Keep your feet on the running board and keep your hands in, please. Princess Pat has been volunteering at the railroad park for the past six years. 9608, all board. She's a conductor. Sitting in the back of the train, she can easily be spotted with a pink tiara on top of her hat. Personally, I like being out here because it's a happy place and people are happy and we make them happy. But to keep customers satisfied, the railroad park says it needs more volunteers. If we don't have enough volunteers, then we run fewer trains and the lines get longer and people have to wait longer or they do something else. Last year, the park saw more than 35,000 visitors. Now in its 33rd year of operation, it's seeing that same rush come back. The only problem is... All our volunteers are getting older, and as they get older, <laughs> they can't work as hard. This is why the park's asking the public to step up and volunteer. If you're interested, contact the railroad park. The only qualifications, you have to be a member of the railroad club. That's a $25 a year fee. You must also be at least 16 years of age and hold a valid driver's license. You will be taught how to properly operate a locomotive and be able to volunteer when the park is open. You think th they're getting something out of it. It's not just for me, it's for them. This kind of volunteering makes you laugh and smile. 